Hello and welcome to this, the 18th lecture um, in the series looking at masonry construction. We're going to look at uh, the window sill detail. So to create a window through a cavity wall, we have to deal with a number of issues. We have to close the cavity. We have to be able to shed water from the bottom of the window and protect the construction from any water penetrating in uh, at the weak spot at the bottom of the window. We also need to be able to stop moist air from passing into the wall from the inside. So this short lecture is going to look uh, step by step at the elements of construction needed to solve the issues mentioned above. So this detail is taken from the Scottish Accredited Details page where um, they give you a number of different details on different types of construction. So there's full fill, partial fill, timber frame. So we're going to look at a full fill construction and this is the, the kind of window detail that we're going to build up. So we start with our two leaves of blockwork. We've got internal and external blockwork. We've got uh, wall ties that are uh, joining these two leaves together. And uh, in order to form this detail, we need to cut the external block work down. So we've got a slightly shorter wall on the outside than we do on the inside. And between these two leaves, we have a full fill cavity. We've got insulation that's tightly packed between the inside leaves and the outside leaf. And we need to check that the building regulations will allow you to do this. Uh, the Scottish building regulations will state that in areas where there are uh, is exposure to lots of different heavy weather, um, that they would prefer to have a free draining cavity. That's probably a good idea. So the first thing that gets installed is a concrete sill. And this is a, a precast concrete sill. So you'd buy this to, to length and uh, it would sit on top of the outer leaf of blockwork. And behind that and to the underside of it, there is a DPC. Now this could be a membrane DPC, but quite often it's a bitumen based DPC that's burnt onto the surface. Um, the top of the sill is sloped away from the building, so it's gonna shed water to the outside. It's gonna project clear from the wall face and the underside has a little drip. And also to the top, we see that there's a little upstand. So we call that a stool. And that stops any water that's sitting on the top surface from being blown back into the window. And because we have a cavity, we have to be able to close that. And we would probably use a proprietary cavity closer. And that would be designed to fit tightly between the inside leaf of blockwork and the back face of the sill. Internally, to stop the moist air passing through the construction and potentially uh, causing damage to the insulation, we need to have some air tightness uh, layers. Um, for the face of the wall, we can use a plaster parge coat. So that's a smooth plaster that's plastered over the inside face of the wall. It fills all the small cavities or holes within that face of the wall and forms an airtight barrier. On to the top face of our opening there, we would use plywood. So we can put the plywood down. We can also use that as a fixing point for a window. So our window is installed, and in this case, it's a timber window. So we see it's got two parts, one that's fixed, which is the window frame. And the part that opens is a sash, and that holds the double glazed unit. And to the underside of that, the frame we have a little metal sill usually aluminium that clips into a groove in the window frame and that would all sit down onto plywood it would be fixed back through to the plywood with screws and the underside of the, the frame where it meets the concrete sill would be, be sealed with a, a gun sealant or a compressible strip and to form an airtight seal against our plywood and the window frame you can fit a metal tape, so like a foil tape that has a high tack, it's very sticky, and it seals the gap between the window frame and the airtight plywood. The next step would be to install the external finish. So in this case, it's a, it's a render coating or harling, but it could be brick slips or it could be some other decorative finish. And the joint between the underside of the sill 
and the harling would be finished with uh, a sealant bead. Internally, we would install some small framing elements. These would be softwood, and onto that, on the face of the wall, we would install plasterboard. Onto the top part, uh, we would install a sole board, um, sometimes called a windowsill, but sill to me is the outside thing and the sole board's the inside thing. So in conclusion, there's some key points to note. The DPC to the underside and back of the sill is commonly left proud when installing to allow it to be dressed up and underneath the window frame so that we get a tight seal at that point. We have cavity closers which should fit between the back face of the sill and the outer face of the inner leaf. We have an airtight membrane which can either be a sheet material or can be smooth plaster like a parge coat or a cement render and that's applied internally. We would use adhesive foil tape to seal around the windows to make sure that that junction was perfectly airtight. And we need to put sealant at all the required junctions of dissimilar materials. Additional sealant beads under window frame can help prevent wind-blown rain from penetrating into construction. Okay, thank you very much for listening, and if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask.